As I get older, I think less about the condition of newfound collectibles and more about preserving wonderful embroidery examples that I find. I am drawn to textiles, especially Victorian ones with beautiful embroidery. Whether I am at an antique store, a garage sale, or flea market, I am constantly on the prowl for wonderful embroideries, even if it is a snippet or a scrap that I can study. I wonder how many women of the past did tedious stitches by hand, and then I marvel that we have our sewing machines today. Sue Houseman is here with me. She is a master of the machine. Her technical abilities are only exceeded by her creativity. I cannot wait to get started. Sewing machine, here we come, and I welcome you to my sewing room. You are going to love this technique called Easy Chenille. Look at this adorable little girl's jacket. It's actually done on a piece of lace with chenille pieces, bias pieces, just straight stitched down on the front and on the back and then little chenille flowers. Oh, this is so much fun and you know we love to do things that are easy. The chenille pieces, the easy chenille pieces, come on rolls, about 40 yards on a roll. And this is what the little strips look like. And there are special feet, if you happen to can get one, that make it easier. But you can just sew it down with a regular straight stitch also. Now, what you do on your jacket piece, you mark where you would like the chenille. This particular jacket is made out of lace, but you can use any fabric. Then, oh, this is so hard to do. How do you stitch it down? Straight stitch right down the middle. So easy. Look here, straight pieces over each other. And on the back of this jacket, we have put one at the bottom. And you guessed it, did not have to finish the bottom. Don't finish the sides. When we get ready to finish it, we'll put another one on the top and the bottom. And the little flowers, you just simply fold the little flowers, straight stitch them down and what fun. I'm so glad to have as my guest today my friend Sue Houseman. Sue is the host of America Sews and America Quilts Creatively. Sue, welcome to the show. <laughs> Great to be here, Martha. <laughs> Isn't this a fun technique? Oh, oh it's so much fun. It's, I think even my seven-year-old granddaughter can do We're this. We're going to get her started. This oh. was actually developed by Nanette Holmberg, and she made that darling little baby jacket. Oh, so but I wanted you to see that this is not just for babies, not just for lace. Look at this denim jacket for any age. And of of course, a pre-made jacket that you add this technique to the edges of the jacket and anywhere you want embellishment and then simply change the buttons and of course a beautiful embroidery on the back. What do you think? Oh, it's <laughs> fabulous. I mean, this is one of those you pay four or five, six hundred dollars in the store for well, at a de designer store. This is oh. the kind of thing you're seeing in those kids' uh, garment stores that are so fancy. Here yeah. you see the start of doing that jacket. Now I have to share that as a home sewer, I actually, when I did my jacket, went around the corner and then and it, it took a little time it wasn't hard but found out I could just sew on and off the edge and I'm going to show you how easy that is to do what we start with as you showed Martha is the rolls of pre-cut uh, bias cut of course fabric and very loosely woven comes in a 25 yard roll that's 3 8 inches wide and 5 8 inch wide in a 40 yard roll and then the fabric or the garment that you're going to put it on and here you see that little foot you talked about. Now, Martha, what I wanted to point out about the foot is that you can, there are several companies that have feet that are chenille feet, mm -hmm. but if you don't have one, you can do this with a regular foot. The two widths are used a little bit differently. Let's show that because basically the wider width goes into this large groove and then under the foot like so. And you can do multiple layers, like two, three, depending how thick you want it. The narrower width would actually go into the little hole right there above the needle. Regular needles, thread to sew it on with, and the next step is to just go ahead and sew it. And we're gonna show that because basically we come over, snap off your standard foot, snap on that chenille foot, and uh, we'll get that right snapped on like so. And just, I like to have the chenille bias strips extending out a little bit at the back. And then if you're going to be on an edge, have that edge finished. But this is so great because you can actually put this right along a raw edge. We're using a straight stitch at a little shorter stitch length than normal. Like about and, what? Uh, one and a half, okay. 1.5. 
uh, to two. And as I said, just straight stitch it. So this is something that can be done by just about anybody. And now you can see that once this is stitched in place, it's very flat looking. And uh, when you go back to finish it, you simply either throw it in the washing machine or you can take a brush if it's a dry clean garment and there are special brushes for this that you simply brush up that chenille to get that chenille effect and you can see here a single layer here a double layer here a layer that has actually the wider underneath and the narrower on top in a different color and if you're using multiple colors put the color you want to see the most of on the top and here of course you see the single layer the double layer and that two color layer before it's stitched down now the potential is crazy you can do all kinds of things including these types of scarves and with this of course you would stitch the chenille strip first with a straight stitch just roar it right through the machine and stitch right down the center because if you don't do that it's going to actually fall apart when you finish <laughs> uh, making it and wash it and then wrap the chenille strip around some sort of a fringe fork type tool sew down the middle throw it in the washing machine and there you have a beautiful scarf. Wow. So what do you think? <laughs> I think this is fascinating. I think people of all ages, I can't, I love your jacket. I can't wait to do one for me. Very similar to that. I just love it. And I can't wait for children's classes to be done on this. Sue, thank you so much. You're so welcome. And now Sue has some wonderful inspirations for your sewing. So tell us about this incredible doll. You know how I love dolls, too. Isn't she sweet? This is, Miss, oh. this is Miss Croatia, and she's actually stitched entirely in the hoop, including the hem stitching and everything, all the cross stitching, her body, her hair, everything in the oh, hoop. I love her little and feet. Look her at her little, little shoes. feet and shoes. Aren't they sweet? So, oh, and the a, back is so adorable. A great gift to, oh. to do in the hoop and then put together. Uh, the pillow, actually, it's a pillow cover for your bed, and Jody Hooker is teaching this at the schools and it's such a beautiful pillow she gave this to herb and i for christmas each Aww. one but what i love to point out to people today is that it's so much easier to do the techniques that used to be hard because there are special feet that help keep everything separated just the right amount for for example for this beautiful spanish hem stitching and help you so straight <laughs> oh, easy is the word, Sue, and that, you're right. Things are have been made easier. This is more of that chenille and how easy this is to do. I brought it especially to show how different colors look and how by flip-flopping a two-layer, uh, you get a whole different effect when you have a total beige on one side and then different colors on the top and then flip-flopping it along the way. And here, a vest, just a single layer of fabric and pointing out that to finish those edges, one layer on the underside, two layer on the top side, no facing, no interfacing, all finished for you, and then lots of embellishment and, of course, beautiful embroidery. That vest from scratch, this vest, are ready to wear and of course wonderful blooming embroideries that have a 3d effect and just that same chenille technique this time only on the outside because that was a finished edge so there was no need to finish it two layers stitched on the outside here's one of my favorites oh. beautiful embroideries um, do you know Kate Fassett? He's yes, an artist of course, in England. In England yes. And this is his uh, embroidery, and it's just beautifully done. And to put it on a jacket, it's so much fun. And I have to tell you a story. I, I actually copied a jacket that had been done in an ad. And when I got it d home and started doing it, I realized the one in the ad must have been a size zero because <laughs> one of these filled the entire front of the jacket. Of course, it took four for me. But yeah. <laughs> You know, when you wore this at convention, I thought that is the best looking jacket I have ever seen in my life. Well, thank you. And everybody just went crazy over this. It's just, it's just simply beautiful. Thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And now Sue has a so quick and an, or actually another so quick and so easy technique for you. Sue, I'm so excited about this technique. <laughs> well, this is a fun one, Martha. Uh, it's a 
cool little project. The technique is felting. And there's a couple ways to do it. But the little purse that you see here started its life as a sweater. Now maybe you have a sweater like this that you've felted. And uh, you do this by washing it in the washing machine, hot water, lots of detergent, dry it in the dryer, and wash it several times with lots of agitations and agitations, agitation, <laughs> and your big sweater will become a baby sweater that can be then cut into this type of a purse. You see, here's the neck of the sweater. What do you think, Martha? I think that's so, a fun purse. Felting the wool is one technique, but other felting is done with a roving technique. And I know you know, Martha, that Herb loves to sew, and he loves to do experimenting. And we've been experimenting a lot with felting on the machine, feeling that it, finding that it's not very kind to your sewing machine by punching a lot of stuff down inside. So what Herb came up with was doing outline embroideries and then adding the roving, the sheep's wool that's been dyed, in between the lines. And so on our purse, you saw two ways of doing this, actually. The first way to just punch in some roving. And so to take your area and just take your felting tool like this, and you put the board underneath the felted fabric, it has to be wool, you unlock the tool, and then you just punch and just punch it down in. And so one way, this is felting. And that's it. That's it. And then you can do your embroidery over it. Or another way is to actually stitch your embroidery first, stitch like an outline embroidery like we have here, and then take that roving, and you don't need very much of this. You need just little tiny, tiny bits of it, and put those little tiny bits over the spot you want to put them on, put that whole thing on that felting board, and then you'll notice that this tool has lots of needles, very well protected, so you can't hurt yourself. But lots of needles then that just punch that right down in. So do your embroidery first, place your little felting board underneath, and then punch it through. And what's really fun is to do it with a pretty blendable type thread. You mean do the embroidery? The embroidery. Okay, mm -hmm. and you do the felting after the embroidery. Yes, and oh. take a look. Well, oh. either way, oh. you can do embroidery over globs of felting too. Okay. But this one was done after embroidery, oh, this, this jacket so on the pretty. back of the jacket. And a lot of people have helped me with this. So there's some little pink spots that really aren't supposed to be where they are, but that's okay. It just gives it a little more character. <laughs> it's called creativity. Right. So thank you so much. <laughs> and now I have a machine embroidery segment for you. I'd like to welcome my guest, Lindy Goodall. Lindy is Vice President of Creative Designs for Cactus Punch. Lindy, I can't wait for you to show our viewers what you have today. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> I brought this quilt. And, Which is so oh, beautiful. Thank you. And it, they look like huge blocks, but actually each one was done in a small four inch hoop. So you could build this entire block in a small hoop and it's very easy. All the instructions are included on the CD, all the patterns are there, everything you need except the fabric and the thread. So let's get started. You can see that I have some little sample designs sewn out so you can see what you're going to be doing. But you'll have these 20 small designs on the collection and you're just going to keep building them in different patterns. And I've included 12 patterns for you. You can come up with more. So you're only limited by your imagination. Now if you have a larger hoop, this is like a six by nine hoop, they've also been included in two to three pieces. So you could do them in two to three hoopings and instead of nine or 12 hoopings. But at least if you just have the four by four embroidery machine, you can do this beautiful thing. Yes, quilt. you can. There's only one design included on the whole CD that requires a slightly larger okay. hoop. So let's look at what we're going to be working with. Well, Lindy, this is basic applique, is that This right? is basic applique. applique. The embroidery, on the embroidery machine. Yes, and applique is so easy. Uh, I'm gonna show you in a minute how applique really transforms this quilt. So you can have a totally different look. If you're not into this really bold look, you could have a soft, subtle look. You could have a retro look. You could have an Americana look. But let's look first at the patterns. You'll have a pattern that shows you the one quadrant for each block. Then you'll also have all the little pieces that go into them, and we have crosshairs on there so that you know where the center of your design in is and how it's oriented. You'll also have a pattern page for all of your appliques. And I like to print this 
on a fusible tearaway. I just run it through my inkjet printer, print it on fusible tearaway paper. Then I can iron these to the front of my fabric and it makes it so easy to cut out. There's no tracing. Here I've already cut out all my pieces and you can see that in this corner, I'll flip it around so I can reach it. I already have, I've already peeled all the little papers off, but I still have one there and I'll just peel that off. I have a fusible pressure sensitive web on the back. I like to lay out all my pattern pieces on a clear piece of acetate and then I just peel them off as I go. And I'll use a little applique iron and press it down in the hoop when I'm to that point. But here are two other groupings and you can see that these look very, very different. So my friend Jeanette made this one. She loves retro fabrics. My friend Ramona, who is into Americana, made this one. Okay. This one was made all in a four inch hoop. My friend Ramona has a commercial machine, so she did that in one hooping. But look how perfect they look. Both of them And look perfect. how different they look from our quilt behind us. So it's pretty amazing. So let's see how we prepare our fabric. We're going to cut a larger square of fabric than we actually need so that we can cut it down. We have some hooping area because if we have to hoop down here, we want enough fabric extended beyond here to get it in the hoop. I've used a fusible no-show cutaway and it looks very lightweight. We don't need a lot of stabilizer behind an applique, so this is perfectly fine. The nice thing about this is that you can rehoop and rehoop and it doesn't crease. I've taken those printouts that I showed you earlier, printed them on the fusible tearaway, and I've pressed them into place. So the next thing to do would be to hoop. Now, oh, let me tell you about these guidelines. Most people prefer to mark their fabric, and they would use a pencil or an air erasable marker. I like to use thread, and I will stitch those lines with basting stitches. They're more permanent, they don't rub off. Next thing to do would be to hoop it, and you just have to make sure that you're straight and relatively close to the hoop. Once you're positioned, you're going to peel this off. I'm not going to hoop this because I need to stand up to hoop. Okay. And so that's the whole process. Oh, Lindy, that was just fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing this wonderful applique techniques on the embroidery machine, Thank of course. you, Martha. Thank you so much. And now I have a quilting segment for you. I have a really interesting technique for you and also a beautiful quilt square to share with a couple of variations. One if you do have an embroidery machine and one if you do not have an embroidery machine. So let's just look at this wonderful quilt. I will have to tell you that the colors on this quilt are the ones that my granddaughters, my teenage, my young teenage granddaughters are begging to have their rooms done in. Purple, pinks, oranges, the bright colors and, and the black are the ones that they just love. So when I look at this, I think about my young teenage granddaughters. This square is the one we're gonna talk about today. Now this beautiful, beautiful insertion with the rose, almost a bullion rose in the middle is made on a sewing machine, machine embroidery. It's done on water soluble stabilizer and you make your own insertion separately and then you straight stitch it using the same color thread, straight stitch it to the quilt square. Although it's a little hard to see with black on black, these are double needle pin tucks, uh, several rows of double needle pin tucks, which are very easy to do. And then as you can see, another row of the insertion that was made on an embroidery machine using pink thread. Now I know some of you do not yet have an embroidery machine, so it is perfectly uh, acceptable to use this wonderful rayon lace trim. You can use any kind of trim you want, but this was purchased already made. And all you do then is when you lay it in place, you straight, and you can dye this. Rayon is a natural fiber and it can be dyed using any kind of fabric dye. Or you can use paint, you know, the fabric paint on there to make it any color you would like it to be. Now, the one thing I'm going to talk about is double needle pin tucks. If you have a machine that has a double needle pin tuck foot or a pin tuck foot, that is great. If you don't, then you can simply put a 
pin tuck, uh, pin tuck needle into your regular sewing machine. If it has a straight stitch, you can use a pin tuck needle, and I use a 1.6 or a 2.0 for heirloom double needle pin tucks, and straight stitch, and you can use a regular zigzag sewing foot. You do not have to have a pin tuck foot. So first of all, in order to put pin tucks in the middle of a piece of fabric, I'm going to have to draw on a guideline of some sort. So that's what I've done. And now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine. I have used a 1.6 double needle or a 2.0, either one for heirloom pin tucks. I have a 1.5 stitch length that is short. And since I do have a pin tuck foot, I'm using it. And you guide these pin tucks in any one of these grooves. It makes it very easy to do double needle pin tucks, putting them very close together. Let me move this out here. And that's all there is. And you say, well, what about a double needle? Does it mean putting two needles in the sewing machine? No. A double needle just has one uh, base to the double needle, and then it kind of veers out a little bit and has two needles. So you can use it no matter what sewing machine you have. I'd say within the last 30 years anyway, sewing machine, you can make double needle pin tucks. Now, after I finish the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This has nine rows of double little pin tucks. Uh, then I will place the either the machine embroidered insertion or the rayon purchased insertion. I will just simply pin it down and straight stitch it to my fabric. And then that's how easy it is to do the square that I have just shared with you. I really am thrilled about the vintage pieces I have to share with you today. They're all for babies. And won't you come along with me to my parlor? I have three beautiful wool chalet baby pieces purchased in Ohio that belong to Sue Houseman to share with you. This little baby coat, which is sort of a very blue-green, beautiful little pastel color, has hand scallops around the collar and some little delicate embroidery. It has wonderful sewing details. In the sleeve, there's piping in the sleeve, and look at this piping, tiny little piping that comes over and simply stops. It goes into the coat. Just a really delicate sewing. Then the hems are actually put in with hand hem stitching with little sweet embroidery down the front. And I thought I would just show you the back of this little baby jacket, which has more of this wonderful self-piping uh, that attaches the pretty little pleats to the bodice or to the yoke. Now I have two more pieces also made out of wool chalet. This adorable little bonnet is wool chalet lined in silk. It has sweet, sweet little uh, embroidered rosebuds over it and a sort of a gray blue and little pink color. Beautiful little netting lace that has a little bit of ribbon on it. And I'm going to kind of just show you the front where you can see the little rosebuds. Your, your ribbon ties have little rosettes and another little ribbon piece. And I also would like to turn it around to the back just to show you how sweet it's gathered down to the back. Now this is a tiny little bonnet for a tiny little head, and you've got to remember that newborns have always worn little caps on their heads. Today in the hospital, they put the little knit caps on them, but a long time ago, you would have put a little wool hat lined in silk like this on your baby's head, on your newborn's head to keep it warm. This is a very, very sweet, sweet little uh, jacket. Actually, they are called matinee jackets. And I'm going to show you how it's made in one piece. Can you see that? But the sweetest little thing on this, and Sue was showing this to me earlier, and she said, look at the sweet little pocket. That is the tiniest little pocket I think I've ever seen. Absolutely precious. And the little um, embroidered flowers are embroidered and scattered all the way around the little matinee jacket and that wonderful little netting lace, a double piece of netting is gathered around the bottom. Once again, this little matinee jacket is lined in silk. For our Sewing from the Heart today, I have a wonderful letter from Patricia uh, Crone Pope from California. Martha, my group, the Stitching Sisters, make quilts for fundraisers for the Children's Hospital in Oakland, California, a facility that never sends any child with life-threatening illnesses away. Each year, we all make the squares and make a community quilt for the local auxiliary branch to raffle off for Mulberry House, where the families stay free of charge while their critically ill children are being treated. The quilt goes on display at the county fair at 
the pre-fair opening gala. We have been doing this for the past five years and we always look forward to starting a new project as soon as we finish one. We started by making baby quilts for the newly baptized children at our church and graduated to this important community project. Patricia Pope of the Stitching Sisters of Livermore, California. Patricia, thanks for writing. And I want to thank all of you for joining in me in my sewing room today. Won't you come back next time?